Flame first instead of a um, instead of a Arcane Boots. This is kind of preference. I personally think Arcane is way better. It, this does give him the, mat, the HP regen as well. And, I mean, yeah, it gives him burst healing, but Arcane Boots pretty much covers your mana needs for the whole game, and from there on, you can just go for the Blink Taker. I really... And, and Earthshaker has low HP already. Why would you want to hurt that with casting the Soul Ring? I don't know. I, I just don't like it a lot. Um, I mean... The only, the only reason that I would advocate it is if you have a rough early game, and Earthshaker isn't doing that good. So, um, a lot of a lot of Earthshakers just kind of like sit on boots for a really long time until they actually get Arcane. So he will be able to contribute until that point since he's not doing as well, but... I don't know, that's just my two, two cents about the Soul Ring. So, uh, Bristlebeck hanging out top. Looks like Batrider's ready to gank on it, but I think the Rocket is not going to spot it. I saw some projectile going over here. I don't know what that was. Not quite sure. But OD is sitting on, he just picked up two Null Talismans, that's going to give him quite a bit more damage. Um, that's like another, what, 6, 12 intelligence, which gives him like 130 mana, which gives him like 10 to 12 pure damage, something like that. Not to mention, it does give him like an extra 6 damage. It's going to buff this number. OD always has good pure damage, looks like he's doing 100 per hit right now. Not to mention, he's getting like 100 damage just here, so each hit he's doing is about 200 without armor resistance. But even with armor resistance, it could be doing about 150, I think, is how, approximately. Something like that. And either way, I do kind of like that mech, though. That was really cool. Uh, it gave him good survivability early and uh, a lot more contribution. He wasn't just super squishy. He didn't have to buy, like, healing salves or anything like that. He could just focus on having a mechanism, and that's pretty cool. And like I said, he's never going to run, run out of mana um, by casting that mech, so it's pretty much a non-stop heal. Uh, I'll probably, I might have to start doing this, because I kind of stopped playing OD, because I was kind of sick of how squishy he was. And uh, most pub games you don't see warding, so it, it, is, it was kind of frustrating to play him, but he used to be my favorite hero by far when I was still kind of a pub noob. So, Alright, looks like the Scourge team is looking to do some good pressuring. The Spirit Bear has a Chainmail already, kind of interesting. Um, does not want him to get picked off too fast, but uh, his Lone Druid is going to play a little safe. And the bear is just going to rock the shit out of this tombstone. Holy crap, bear does get shackled, which is good. He's going to take a lot of damage right here, and there was a pipe on... Wow, Bristbeck going pipe next. Really nice move there. I like that pickup. That's really, really, really smart. I think, but Bat Rider getting entangled. He's going to go down here. I don't know if he made anything happen here. I don't even think he got the Earthshaker. Earthshaker is low. He does have a... Nope, no Maledict. That is just the Undying ult. Making it look like everybody's Maledicted, but everybody's sitting pretty okay. Clockwork's a little low. Earthshaker was a little low, but they are okay. And the Silver Bear also taking quite a bit of damage. We'll recall the Spirit Baron for just a second. There we go. Radiance damage on all those creeps. Is going to give him some CS, so... And that was a nice team fight for the Scourge team. I don't think they lost any heroes, but they did pick off that Bat Rider. And that's a good hero to pick off at this point. I mean, sure, they'd rather get the uh, Obsidian Desolator or the Windrunner, but it's... I'm, I'm sorry, I don't always say Obsidian Desolator. It's Obsidian Destroyer, excuse me. Um, probably because I'm thinking Stiggy and Desolator. And it's kind of close to Destroyer, so my bad. Uh, looks like Odie's actually going to go for an Aghanims next, unless he's just picking up a point booster temporarily. I personally hate Aghanims Rush on OD. I don't think it's good. It, I mean, it gives you more mana, and it gives you more survivability. It's good for that, by all means. It's going to give you, like, 390 HP. It's going to give you, like, 280 mana, which increases your orb damage and keeps your survivability up. But the benefits of it, it only increases your ult factor by one. So the way OD works is, if he has more intelligence than you when he ults you, his ult does that many damage times a factor. So at level 1, it does 9, I believe. At level 2, it does 10 times. At level 3, it does 11 times. Doesn't scale super well, by all means. And we're going to have a rush battle in just a second, so I'll talk about that in a moment. Batrider's going to be initiating, but he does not know who he wants to net up. He now finds the Earthshaker. He just spots him there. Earthshaker was just about to cast, but he's taking a lot of damage. Nice. The, the Enigma does black hole. The Earthshaker does get... His Echo Slam off. It looks like the co someone's cogged in there with the Clockwork, or he gets a pick off there. The, the bear is doing quite a bit of damage, but he needs to run. He's in a disadvantage. The OD does such big chunks of damage to him. He does end up going down. That is a really nice counter to a Sil Bear is an OD because he does pure damage. That goes right through the super high armor that bear has. So, really good team fight for the Sentinel team. Bat Rider was able to initiate, and as a result, they gonna, they're going to pick off the Aegis there. And, uh, Taking a little rocket damage or something there. Um, and it looks like, is there a rune anywhere? Rune is spawning top, so Bat is probably going to swing up and pick that up. And OD's sitting pretty good on the HP. He's going to probably mech up the next chance he gets. Uh, next time it's off cooldown. It might be off cooldown now. Yep, there it goes. Popping the mech. Wow, so much healing. I love this team setup. Mech on the OD. Uh, the Undyne's going to be healing, and the Witch Doctor as well can heal if he wants to. And Witch, Doc well, Witch Doctor has very low armor right now. 
are very, very low items, but if we look at the Vlads that they're currently rocking, I mean, all these creeps are getting lifesteal. Look how much lifesteal we're getting. Bam, it was awesome. Um, and which Doctor have some items? Oh, he's going to be picking up a medallion. That's really cool. That's going to give him some mana regen for when he does pop his uh, heal. So that's really cool. And he could, if he wants to be a badass, he can medallion someone and then ult. Which is unlikely to work. I mean, it's hard enough to get uh, Witch Doctor ult off on people, but that would be sweet. And he's going to pop his heal here. I would love to see him switch to Intreds right now. Um, if you are using up um, your mana, you want to be casting from an Intred perspective. Not to mention that Intreds plus mana regen gives you quite a bit more uh, mana regen per second. So, But not a big deal. Not the end of the world by any means. So don't worry about it. Windrunner does have a pipe now with those phase boots. Um, that's a pretty smart plan, considering they're fighting uh, magic here, a little bit of magic here, magic here, and the Radiance is going to get stopped completely. Um, plate Mail on the Lindrude, that's why he picked up that Chain Mail. He's going to be going for a fast AC immediately afterwards. Kind of usually we end up seeing uh, the AC get placed on the bear, but I think his bear might still be dead here, unless it's somewhere else. There it is. It does get recalled in. Here comes the big team fight. Obsidian Desolator taking a crap load of damage. He was stunned for so long, he's still stunned. He goes down just now. The a pipe was popped for the Scourge team, and they just got a double kill there. Holy crap. That was the brown player. That is the clockwork getting a double kill on those heroes. That was really nice. He almost dies to the Maledict, taking a lot of damage there. He doesn't have a hood quite yet, but he's going to get a BKB instead, and I think this is really, really smart. Um, if you do pop your BKB, it doesn't matter how much damage the Maledict is supposed to do to you. It doesn't do damage anymore while the Black King bar is on. And especially when he initiates against like a Windrunner and uh, you know Undying casting his nukes, um, Batrider ult can still go through it, um, but I mean it's going to complete. Oh yeah, especially OD. When you pop your BKB, your Magic Immune, that's the biggest counter to Obsidian de de Destroyer. Block close. Biggest counter to Obsidian Destroyer is being Magic Immune because then he can't orb you. He honestly can't cast his orb on Magic Immune people. So we have a Necronomicon recipe. I'm going to guess Undyne. No. Um, not Batrider. Who's got that? Windrunner? Might be Windrunner, although I think she's going to go for a Force Staff. Why is that there? Was that a misbuy or something? I'm really confused. Um, Witch Doctor? Odie? Might be Odie. It's not a bad item on Odie by any means. It gives, you ma it gives you intelligence, which obviously makes you nuke. It gives you strength, which means you're not going to die as much. I don't know why that's there. Was that a misbuy? I'm really confused. And oh dang, looks like they're initiating on the blood crystal bike here, but he takes such little damage. Even he has that hood taking 190 from that first Maledic, but he's regening so much per second that, look at that, it's barely doing more damage per tick. So he's going to easily survive that with that pipe. Uh, I bet he popped the pipe as well, so preventing a lot of damage to himself there. And uh, looks like he's going to continue farming. Well, if we look at his gold, he has 91 gold. What has he got? Boots of travel, maybe? He's got a Vlad's coming, cool. So he's going to have even more armor for his team. And I think that's very smart as well. Um, Gonna pick up the Vlads. It does give you two regen per second now. Oh, I'm sorry. No, if we look at the item, this is apparently a 6.72B um, game, so not he does not get that extra bonus. But he is gonna have life steal, and he does big chunks of damage per hit, so it's not ridiculous by any means. And especially, it will give his team armor um, against those tombstone zombies. It'll be really good. I mean, I th I think this is the first pro game in a long time I've casted where both teams had a Vlads. Like, you almost never see a Vlads in a pro-level game, but this game, they're like, hell yeah, Vlads is the way to roll. And there's that Black King bar on the clockwork. Like I said, it's going to be really, really good when he initiates on the Obsidian De Destroyer. Gosh, I keep almost saying it. Okay, and it is the Windrunner picking up the Necro, apparently. That's cool. Um, normally, you see them going for staff, especially against the clockwork, so I'm kind of curious. Oh, cool, the OD's just going to be going Bloodstone, turns out. I think that's pretty smart. It, he's not going to benefit from the mana, by any means, he's going to get a Soul Booster just now. There's the Soul Booster. Soul Booster now gives you 4 HP regen per second and 100% mana regen, which is cool. But it gives you 450 H points and 400 mana. And the main thing is it's going to boost your orb damage by quite a bit. I mean, 400 mana, that's like, I think it's 9% per orb at this point. So that's uh, 9 times 4, whatever that is, 36 extra pure damage per hit. And uh, once he rounds that out with Perseverance, um, he's going to be doing a lot of... He might just sit on the Soul Booster, actually. I think that would be the smartest thing to do. Just not finish it off. Just sit on a Soul Booster right here. Do you really need um, the extra HP regen? It doesn't. It only gives you... Like, if you got a Perseverance, give him 4 extra HP regen and, like, 100% extra mana regen, which he doesn't need. And uh, then you would have Charges, which give more mana regen, which he doesn't need. So I think it would be very wise to just sit on the Soul Booster. When I first played OD, I would always get Bloodstone. But it was like, I would get Bloodstone on everybody because I didn't know what the hell to buy. 
Um, but Soul Booster, very, very good. Honestly, I really like that. We'll see if he does make a Bloodstone. I, th I think it would be worth it for him just not to. So, I don't know. We'll see. Batrider looking to initiate, but uh, he's... Oh, wow, we actually have a hero over here. Claw Grip once again, sitting all shiftily. He's ready for the initiation. Here it comes. Here goes the hook. He's going to pop his BKB any second here. He does have the BKB up. Huge black hole. This is hitting so many heroes. And that little... The, the purple stuff doing lots of damage as well. OD goes down. The, the bear goes down. Now we just have a Silver Bear without a Radiance. That is very unfortunate. Witch Doctor Ult doing crap loads of damage. Um, not doing a crap load to the Bristleback, but doing pretty good damage here. The lad's not accomplishing a whole lot. The Lone Druid does have a lot of HP. The Fire Break does land down. Nice Fire Break from that Bat Rider. And he's pretty low on life, but they are going to be chasing the Bristleback at this point. And the Windrunner is more concerned about just slowing him down. He's taking a lot of damage from those heroes. Windrunner sitting at plus 60 damage with that Vladzora, and the Sentinel team is going to clean up hard there. I mean, Scourge had perfect initiations there, and they still lost, so this is not looking good for them. It's currently 18 to 17. This is a 32-minute game, and the Sentinel team is finally going to pick up this Tier 1 tower up here. There's pretty much no way the Scourge is going to be able to defend that. I really can't believe they lost that. Honestly, they had a huge Black King bar. I didn't. Maybe there was something going on that I didn't see, but... I mean, they have a lot of heals, and it's probably why they're just absolutely rocking. And a pipe as well. I'm sure the pipe was keeping their HP up. And, yeah, very interesting. Uh, Earthshaker going to stun that guy, but he does not have a blink, so he has to be pretty careful here. The, if the Bat is a little bit more forward, he possibly could have netted him there. It looks like Undyne wanted to jump on him, but they're definitely a little out of range, unfortunately. And the OD is going to swing bot and clean up the CS here. If we look at his cash, 765 on him. Windrunner is ready to purchase some more recipes, which I would love to see. Um, 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 oh, BTP's back. He's going to get another Necro. There he goes. Necro 2. I don't quite know why they're getting the Necro. Um, Necro is always... Necro is a great... It's a great item, by all means. Gives you chase, gives you attack speed, gives you mana drain, gives you that little dude. Probably, probably in the hope that um, the Bristleback will will it to death and then it's then the bristleback will take like 800 pure damage which is not reduced by kegdar's pipe it's not reduced by vanguard and it's probably not reduced by his bristleback as well that's like half of his hp so if they can get that to die in bristleback that's a very smart plan if that's what they're going for that's really cool so windrunner gonna pick up a double damage rune nobody really close to make anything happen here he's sitting very low armor but there is that team vlad's frame which is uh, gonna help out quite a bit usually you fill that gap with a mech or with a Ring of Basilius, but um, needless to say, the other players in the, on his team already have that, so possible initiation going to be going down the Bristleback here. Obsidian Destroyer ready to do a lot of damage, but the other Scourge heroes are here, ready to go. We have a Blink on the Enigma, and Clockwork can always hook, so here we go. Scourge team roaming in, ready to do some stuff. Hookshot any second here, but it looks like nothing yet. He still hasn't had a good position. There's some heroes in the way. They're going to be auto-attacking the crap of the OD. He does get... Um, and Snared, which is going to do a lot of damage, but he banishes himself. Very smart move. Bear going to be uh, auto-attacking this Flesh Golem. Bat Rider blinking out here. He does have a Mystic Staff ready to do possibly pick up a Sheep. And the OD does get netted again. So much damage going down. Uh, the Bear doing a little bit of auto-attacking. Um, looks like the Melee Creep is just rocking this Enigma. That would be hilarious if he gets the kill. I can't watch that, though. There's got to be a more important thing to see. Chasing down this Witch Doctor. Bounces going around. It does hit the Bear. He does get the Entangle. First hit off. Gets the Entangle, but beautiful Shackle Shot. It's going to prevent any more... Uh, auto attacks from the bear for just a moment. He doesn't have phase boost yet, but he has so much attack speed with this hyperstone. Wow, lucking out once again, getting an entangle on the first hit. This bear did very, very good this battle, and he's just about to get an AC here. This is how you play Lone Druid. You put all the good items on the silly bear, or on the silly bear, the spirit bear. And especially with that attack speed, you can get a lot of entangles off. And he's so close. He just needs about 1,300, I believe. And he's going to have his AC. And there's going to be more minus armor going on, which is very, very smart, considering you have a Bristleback that's going to counter their Vlad's Shack shot going down on the Bristleback. But he's not going to take a lot of damage there. Just kind of being annoying. And going to pick up this Tier 2 tower by Moscow 5. It's 18 to 20. Moscow is in the lead. And I would say they're sitting really good right now. They rocked that team fight. They have better items right now, in my opinion. The Silver is getting really, really farmed. They already have a Vlad's for him. Obviously, the team Vlad's going down by... Somebody had that. The Bristleback had that. So those two heroes are actually complementing each other extremely well. The Silver and the, the Bristleback. They basically have, like, two tanks. Um, normally, you just kind of rely on the Spirit Bear to do most of the crafts and kind of tank potential, but um, now they're going to do really good. Uh, yeah, I don't think Bristleback needs any more farm. I think that's really safe to do. Give it all to Silver. He's going to carry harder at this point. And sure, Bristleback can farm when nobody's around, but give the, give the CS to that Bristleback, or to that uh, Lone Druid. I mean, if Bristleback wants any items next, you could argue he could fit in Boots of Travel, and then 
he could drop his one and pick up like a heart or something or possibly drop his one and get a heart but that's a lot of farm it takes a long time to get a heart he's at 2k gold right now and boots of travel would actually benefit from benefit him because he will be 